Hi, I'm Shane from Sitecore and in this presentation we will explore the Sitecore system components. Once we have installed Sitecore CEP, it is a great idea to explore the components installed and configurations done by the web application installer. In case you need to learn how to install Sitecore CEP from the web application installer, please watch Installing Sitecore using Web Application Installer video from Sitecore Developers Fundamental Series. The Web Application Installer in default mode copies three folders containing required resource files in the file system, creates and attaches three relational databases, and finally hosts a website on your local IS in a dedicated application pool. Let's look at them one by one. Sitecore Web Application Installer installs three relational databases. They are used for storage of configuration, content, ASP.NET membership schema and media items that are uploaded into Sitecore. The master database contains the content item under progress that is all the content we are working on and still not finalized such as an article or product information and hence sometimes also referred as work in progress database. Master database also contains all the version of content such as version 1, version 2, version 3 for any content item. Content authors are connected to master database using page editor or content editor. The web database on the other hand contains the published or live content that is the content that the website visitors get to see. The visitors are connected to web database. So in a case if a content item has three versions then usually the latest version which is third is displayed to the visitors. The core database stores configuration information for Sitecore interface or client tools. It also stores ASP.NET membership schema in case you are managing membership and roles. You might have additional database for analytics in case you have also installed DMS that is Sitecore Digital Marketing System. Let's have a closer look at the databases. Launch SQL Management Studio and connect to the database instance you selected during installation. Now once we are connected let's drill down to find the databases created by our installation. The databases are named after Sitecore instance and appended Sitecore underscore core or web or master. In our case Sitecore 7 is the instance name. Ok, so here are the databases of our interest. Observe that schema of master appears similar to the web. The content items are first created in master database by content authors and on publishing move to web database for visitors. Sitecore is a connected CMS system so it is very easy to move content from authoring environment to delivery environment. One of the most important tables in master database is the items table. It may be a good idea to observe the schema of database to get a gist of how items and its various dependencies are stored. The core database contains ASP.NET membership tables in addition to standard Sitecore tables. The core database contains resources and settings for Sitecore client interface such as page editor and content editor. We always use Sitecore client interface or Sitecore API to talk to database. Developers never write SQL statements. Instead, they use API to access content items. Now, let's see what do we got installed on our file system by web application installer. The web application installer creates three folders under a folder named same as your instance name. The data folder contains the logs, 
package and index folders to name a few. The license file is the most important resource found here. The database folder contains the physical MDF and LDF file if you opted for SQL Server as database during installation. And finally, the website folder contains a standard ASP.NET web application. Let's look at them in the following demo. Drill down to Sitecore instance name folder in wwroot or the location you selected during installation. Our instance name is Sitecore 7. Click the folder to observe three folders, data, database and website. In data folder, Sitecore creates and maintains logs, indexes, diagnostic, debug and view state information. The logs are useful during a troubleshooting or maintenance scenario. The packages folder is used by Sitecore package designer. The Sitecore package designer is a tool to create Sitecore package. A Sitecore package is a way to distribute Sitecore projects. We will learn more about packages in an upcoming video. The license is the most important resource found in data folder. Right click the license and open the file with an editor of your choice. I choose Visual Studio 2012. Once the license file is loaded, let's search for the expiration tab. And observe the value in the tab. My license will expire on 2014 January 21st. The time part is separated by T. So effectively the second part is midnight. By default the data folder is anonymous accessible over web. So there is a possibility that one types the path of license file in the URL and download the license. Therefore you must ensure that data folder is ideally moved out of WW root in production environment to protect license and other resources. The database folder contains the LDF and MDF files for our installed databases. The website folder contains a standard ASP.NET web application. Observe ASP.NET folders such as App Browser, App Config and the bin folder. Sitecore lives in Sitecore.com kernel assembly. By default, Sitecore presentation components such as layouts and sublayouts are placed into Sitecore layouts folder. Another type of presentation components called renderings are placed by default in XSL folder. Invest some time exploring web.config at root level. Look inside app config for more config files such as command.config and connectionstrings.config files. You need to invest significant amount of time exploring all these files but it is worth and saves lots of time later during the development period. Now let's fit in the last piece of puzzle. The last piece of puzzle is to observe the configurations made at IS level. A website is configured with the name you provided during installation. Remember, this could be different than your Sitecore instance name. The website runs under a dedicated app pool named after your website and appended with app pool. It is a good idea to have the site running in a dedicated app pool under development and quality environments to isolate it from other applications. An entry is made in the host file for your website for local host. Let's launch our IS manager and give them a closer look. Once in IS manager, expand the sites node and observe the Sitecore 7 website. This is the website installed by the web application installer. Right click, choose manage websites and select browse. Observe the URL. 
let's figure out the entry made in host file by Sitecore web application installer. The host file path is OS dependent. On Windows 7, the host file path is C Windows System32 slash drivers slash etc slash host. Let's open the host file in notepad to look at the entry. Here is the entry for our Sitecore 7 website. Finally, look at app pools by selecting app pools in IS Manager. Select Sitecore 7 app pool and observe that by default the framework is set to 4.0 and Manage Pipeline mode is set to integrated for Sitecore 7 CEP. I hope now we have the basic understanding of Sitecore system components. See you in next session. Please provide your comments and feedback at our YouTube channel to help us improve and encourage. We would also love to hear if you have a Sitecore topic or feature that we can help you learn. Once again, this is Sane from Sitecore. Thanks for watching.